Hello YouTube, I'm Dawn and welcome to Double D Homestead. And today I wanna to talk about some tips for people if you're new to homesteading or thinking about being a homesteader. I talked to Mark and we were on the same page with pretty much everything. So I got some tips for you. Number one, get to know your local AC, ASCS office. They are your friend. They will help you with all kinds of things. They can, now there's a little fee to some of this. They can do a soil test for you. And that's one of our tips. Don't go buy a bunch of seed, expensive seeds and then just go plant them and you have no idea how your soil's doing. Get your soil tested if you need to. Or you can, you know, you can buy a test kit on Amazon if you want to. Pinball Preparedness had a thing about that. But, uh, uh, they can, uh, this is for Face Hope and Charity, Home, Charities Homestead. They can test your gauge on your pressure canner. They can check your seals for you. They do all kinds of things. They, some, they have, uh, in our area, they have canning classes that go around from county to county and things like that. I mean, they are just a wealth of information. They are your friend. You pay taxes, use them. <laughs> Yes, they are your friend. And uh, let's see. I have notes. <laughs> so, let's see what else. Okay, I got my notes all mixed up. <laughs> Don't buy anything on a whim. Don't go, oh, that's just so cute. No, no. Don't go buying it on a whim. <laughs> Think through everything you do. Like if you want a goat, Think through the goats. Do you have a clean place to keep them? What size goats do you want? What is your purpose for these goats? You have to, you know, think it all the way through where you're gonna keep them. Do you have a place to keep them? And can you keep them fed? And uh, same with chickens or anything. Always make sure you think it all the way through what their purpose is. Is there a purpose for food? Are you gonna milk your goats? Um, excuse me. Are you gonna eat your male goats? Are you gonna band them and make them weathers and use them for food? Goats good, by the way. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so any, any animal you decide you want on your homestead, make sure you think it all the way through and uh, don't buy on a whim just cause, oh, it's so cute. Yeah, that can get you in a lot of trouble. And uh, make sure you can handle the animal you have. I I would love to have the great big, great big milk goats. I don't have the great big milk goats. I got small goats that I can handle by myself because I have to take care of these goats throughout the day when I'm here by myself. So make sure you have animals you can handle. Well, here's my goats. I'll show you what I do uh, with them. goat. See, she's on a tie out on that brick there. There's the baby jumping on me. There's my billy goat. He's not full grown yet. And he's on a tie out and they're close together and can see each other. And I move them around every day. There's the baby. He stays with mama pretty good. He goes up and plays with the little billy, but mama doesn't get too stressed out. And another tip is if you go buy animals at the stockyard, like I bought my bull up here at the stockyards, they have a vet there. Run that animal through the vet. Get all its shots, get it wormed. If you want it castrated, get it castrated. They'll do it all right there, and it's super cheap. I think it was like, we didn't have him castrated, but uh, I think it was like $17. They wormed them, gave them their shots, checked them out. Yeah, so save yourself some money with a vet. <laughs> and you will have failures. Don't stress over it. Everybody does. Learn from it. And move on, regroup, try again. We've lost animals. Our garden this year is not doing well. We're having a drought. <laughs> Can't help it. It is what it is. City water, it keeps it from dying, but it doesn't do like rainwater. It doesn't grow it like great rainwater does. And uh, so, yeah, one thing, never, ever give up because we have failures. It happens. <laughs> it's just part of it. And uh, always use heirloom seeds if you can, at all possible, use heirloom seeds. 
you can seed save with your heirloom seeds and save yourself a lot of money, a lot of money. And of course, Mark threw this one in here for sure. Have a dependable pickup truck. You don't have to have a big F-350 or 3,500 Silverado, but just a dependable pickup truck. Right now, my truck's broke down. I've got my little Jeep running still, but my old truck's broke down. It's a pain without a truck. So yeah, my Jeep's a mess because we're chucking everything in the back of the Jeep now. Yeah, <laughs> including firewood recently. Well, a few months ago, but yeah, we've had to use it as a truck here the last few months and I think we might have to put a motor in my truck, but that'd be all right. All right. Don't overwhelm yourself. Like I said, if this is your first year for a garden, say, don't go put a giant garden out and you've never gardened before. Start small. Same with animals. Don't buy 50 meat chickens thinking, oh, I've got meat chickens and you can get overwhelmed really, really easy. <laughs> with too much at one time. Start small and work your way out. You know, like, you wanna raise a meat hog, raise one or two and go out from there. And if you want six and you did two, great, that's great, you know? But don't overwhelm yourself when you're first starting out. Baby steps, baby steps, baby steps. And, uh, don't go crazy, crazy. Like, I'm going to give you a story. Story time. <laughs> we went to the stockyards a couple years ago. And normally I can buy a bottle calf from anywhere from 20 to 80 bucks. Little bottle calf, you got to go home, feed it milk. And uh, this woman, God bless her heart. She uh, was buying every bottle calf that came through. And she was paying right around 300 plus dollars for every calf she bought. And she was buying Holsteins. Black Angus baby calves usually don't even go that high around here. So she had went and moved down here from up north. We have a lot of people from up north that's moved down here recently. And uh, she went and got a huge bank loan to start homesteading and raising beef calves. She got them up to sell in size, which they want them on the feedlot. I'll write about 800 pounds. Or no, I'm sorry, 500 pounds. If they go over 500, the price would drop on them because they're the wrong size. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, that's a different story. But this lady went into huge debt buying all these calves. And by the time she raised them to feedlot size and took them back to the ring and sold them again, for feedlot calves, she lost money like you wouldn't believe because she went hog wild and bought way out of her budget and bought way too much and way overpaid it. And she wound up going bankrupt and losing everything. So keep that in mind. Keep it in your budget <laughs> and know what you're doing when you get into it. But Joshua brings me into Know who you're dealing with and talk to your local people. Talk to your local farmers. Talk to your local homesteaders. Not right now, briefly. And uh, get to know them. They will be your best resource. Them in the ASCS office. I call it the county extension office and Mark calls it the AC, ASCS office. But uh, you pay taxes, use that. But your local people are the ones that know that area for growing know who to deal with, know where to send you. Like, I don't buy feed at Tractor Supply. <laughs> I go to the local feed store. That's a wealth of information in the local feed store. Your local hardware store, if you have a small community hardware store, great information in there too. They can, hey, this guy does rock and, you know, if you need stuff, they know who which way to send you. Same, I mean, find out where the old farmers go have coffee in the morning. And, uh, you know, I did that when I first moved down here. I found out where the farmers went and had coffee because this was a griff different growing area for me. Ripley, I, excuse me for a minute. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Ripley had to go out. <laughs> but, yeah, get to know your local people. That's, that's helpful. 
It's helpful. And you'll also learn who to and not deal with. You need to know that too. <laughs> but yeah, um, let's see. I think I pretty much covered what I wanted to talk about. And I want to stress, if you have physical limitations, keep that in mind when you're doing setting yourself up on a homestead like me with the goats. I've got small goats. I'd like to have the big goats. I can milk the little goat just like I can a big goat. <laughs> but yeah, I can't handle a large animal by myself. So I had to keep that in mind. And, you know, that's just how you have to do it. So I don't know if this helps anybody. I hope so. And I hope you enjoyed this little chat. And you all take care and God bless you. And thank you to all my new subscribers. And thank you to everyone that comes back every day. Take care, folks.